and Body Part 4 by Henry Gray. The Hindbrain Part 3. The cerebellum constitutes the largest part of the hindbrain. It lies behind the pons and medulla oblongata. Between its central portion and these structures is the cavity of the fourth ventricle. It rests on the inferior occipital fossae, while above it is the tentorium cerebellae, a fold of dura mater which separates it from the tentorial surface of the cerebrum. It is somewhat oval in form, but constricted medially and flattened from above downward its greatest diameter being from side to side. Its surface is not convoluted like that of the cerebrum, but is traversed by numerous curved furrows or sulci, which vary in depth at different parts, and separate the laminae of which it is composed. Its average weight in the male is about 150 grams. In the adult, the proportion between the cerebellum and cerebrum is about 1 to 8. In the infant, about 1 to 20. Lobes of the cerebellum. The cerebellum consists of three parts, a median and two lateral, which are continuous with each other and are substantially the same in structure. The median portion is constricted and is called the vermis from its annulated appearance which it owes to the transverse ridges and furrows upon it. The lateral expanded portions are named the hemispheres. On the upper surface of the cerebellum, the vermis is elevated above the level of the hemisphere, but on the undersurface, it is sunk almost out of sight in the bottom of a deep depression between them. This depression is called the vallecula cerebellae and lodges the posterior part of the medulla oblongata. The part of the vermis on the upper surface of the cerebellum is named the superior vermis, that on the lower surface the inferior vermis. The hemispheres are separated below and behind by a deep notch, the posterior cerebellar notch, and in front by a broader shallower notch, the anterior cerebellar notch. The anterior notch lies close to the pons and upper part of the medulla, and its superior edge encircles the inferior colliculi and the superior cerebellar peduncle. The posterior notch contains the upper part of the falx cerebellae, a fold of dura mater. The cerebellum is characterized by a laminated or foliated appearance. It is marked by deep, somewhat curved fissures, which extend for a considerable distance into its substance and divide it into a series of layers or leaves. The largest and deepest fissure is named the horizontal sulcus. It commences in front of the pons and passes horizontally around the free margin of the hemisphere to the middle line behind and divides the cerebellum into an upper and a lower portion. Several secondary but deep fissures separate the cerebellum into lobes and these are further subdivided by shallower sulci which separate the individual folia or laminae from each other. Sections across the laminae show that the folia, though differing in appearance from the convolutions of the cerebrum, are analogous to them inasmuch as they consist of central white substance covered by gray substance. The cerebellum is connected to the cerebrum, pons, and medulla oblongata, to the cerebrum by the superior peduncle, to the pons by the middle peduncle, and to the medulla oblongata by the inferior peduncles. The upper surface of the cerebellum is elevated in the middle and sloped towards the circumference, the hemispheres being connected together by a superior vermis, which assumes the form of a raised median ridge most prominent in front but not sharply defined from the hemispheres. The superior vermis is subdivided from before backwards into the lingula, the lobus centralis, the monticulus, and the folium vermis, and each of these, with the exception of the lingula, is continuous with the corresponding parts of the hemispheres. The lobulus centralis with the ali, the monticulus with the quadrigeminal lobules, and the folium vermis with the superior semilunar lobules. The lingula, lingula cerebelli, is a small tongue-shaped process consisting of four or five folia. It lies in front of the lobulus centralis and is concealed by it. Anteriorly, it rests on the dorsal surface of the anterior medullary velum, and its white substance is continuous with that of the velum. The lobulus centralis and ala. 
The lobula centralis is a small square lobule situated in the anterior cerebellar notch. It overlaps the lingula from which it is separated by the precentral fissure. Laterally, it extends along the upper and anterior part of each hemisphere, where it forms a wing-like prolongation, the ala lobula centralis. The monticulus and quadrangular lobules. The monticulus is the largest part of the superior vermis. Anteriorly, it overlaps the lobula centralis from which it is separated by the postcentral fissure. Laterally, it is continuous with the quadrangular lobule in the hemispheres. It is divided by the preclival fissure into an anterior raised part, the culmen or summit, and a posterior slope part, the clivus. The quadrangular lobula is similarly divided. The culmen and the anterior parts of the quadrangular lobules form the lobus culminus, the clivus and the posterior parts, the lobus clevi. The fulum vermis and superior semilunar lobule. The folium vermis, folium cacuminis, cacuminal lobe, is a short, narrow, concealed band at the posterior extremity of the vermis, consisting apparently of a single folium, but in reality marked on its upper and under surfaces by secondary fissures. Laterally, it expands in either hemisphere into a considerable lobule, the superior semilunar lobule, lobulus semilunaris superior, posterior superior lobules which occupy the posterior third of the upper surface of the hemispheres and is bounded below by the horizontal sulcus. The superior semilunar lobules and the folium vermis form the lobus semilunaris. The undersurface of the cerebellum presents in the middle line the inferior vermis buried in the vollecula and separated from the hemisphere on either side by a deep groove, the sulcus folliculae. Here, as on the upper surface, there are deep fissures dividing it into separate segments or lobules, but the arrangement is more complicated and the relation of the segments to the vermis to those of the hemispheres is less clearly marked. The inferior vermis is subdivided from below backwards into 1, the nodule, 2, the uvula, 3, the pyramid, and 4, the tumor vermis. The corresponding parts on the hemisphere are 1, the flocculus, 2, the tonsillus cerebelli, three, the biventral lobule, and four, the inferior semilunar lobule. The three main fissures are one, the postnodular fissure, which runs transversely across the vermis between the nodule and the uvula. In the hemisphere, this fissure passes in front of the tonsil, crosses between the flocculus in front and the biventral lobule behind, and joins the anterior end of the horizontal sulcus. Two, the prepyramidal fissure crosses the vermis between the uvula in front and the pyramid behind, then curves forward between the tonsil and the biventral lobe to join the postnodular fissure. 3. The postpyramidal fissure passes across the vermis between the pyramid and the tuber vermis and, in the hemispheres, courses behind the tonsil and biventral lobules and then along the lateral border of the biventral lobule to the postnodular sulcus. In the hemisphere, it forms the anterior boundary of the inferior semilunar lobule. The nodule and flocculus. The nodule, nodulus firmus, nodular lobe, or anterior end of the inferior vermis, abuts against the roof of the fourth ventricle and can only be distinctly seen after the cerebellum has been separated from the medulla oblongata and pons. On either side of the nodule is a thin layer of white substance named the posterior medullary vellum. It is semilunar in form, its convex border being continuous with the white substance of the cerebellum, it extends on either side as far as the flocculus. The flocculus is a prominent irregular lobule situated in front of the biventral lobule between it and the midder cerebellar peduncle. It is subdivided into a few small laminae and is connected to the inferior medullary vellum by its central white core. The flocculi, together with the posterior medullary vellum and nodule, constitute the lobus noduli. The uvula and tonsilla. The uvula, uvula vermis, uvular lobe, forms a considerable portion of the inferior vermis. It is separated on either side from the tonsil by the sulculus folliculae, 
at the bottom of which it is connected to the tonsil by a ridge of gray matter, indented on its surface by shallow furrows, and hence called the furrowed band. The tonsilla, tonsilla cerebelli, amygdalene nucleus, is a rounded mass situated in the hemispheres. Each lies in a deep fossa termed the bird's nest.